The DRDO conducted a developmental flight of the Agni-5 nuclear-capable ballistic missile last year, which had a 20% weight reduction, and can hit targets at increased ranges of over 7,000 km, and with a lighter payload, it can hit targets at 9,000 km, that brings the Chinese capital and all major Chinese cities within its strike range. There has been a speculation that the DRDO is working on the Agni-6 with a range of 10,000 to 13,000 km, allowing it to hit targets anywhere in the world, but this is not going to happen, as the scientific advisor to Minister of Defense Dr. Satish Reddy has denied that India is working on a successor to the Agni-5, fueling speculation that it was the Agni-5 Mark II missile which was tested with reduced weight and new technologies and the Agni Mark II has achieved the desired range that India wanted for its Agni-6 program. The Indian Air Force and the RDO's Electronics and Radar Development Establishment are collaborating to develop an upscale Dutam Mark III ACE radar for integration on Su-30 aircraft from 2024 onwards. The Utam Mark III ACE radar will weigh less than half of its predecessor, but will accommodate 1,400 TR modules, and will provide a significantly increased detection range. The Air Force intends to send two Su-30 aircraft for integration and airborne flight testing, which will take another 24 months before the radar is ready for production in 2028 and will be integrated on 150 Su-30 fighter jets over the next 4 to 5 years, while older Su-30 units will continue to operate with older M011 MBARS radar. The Aeronautical Development Agency and the Indian Navy were in talks about producing 8 naval Tejas trainers, to train future fighter pilots for operating MiG-29K Rafale Marine and Ted BF fighters, and as per latest reports, the Indian Navy is still evaluating the naval Tejas aircraft, and might consider it for other roles such as trainer, after the NP-5 trainer aircraft is completed. The Tejas NP-5 is under assembly, and will be used to conduct off-nominal landing trials, to study and collect data on the stress points on the landing gears, which will be critical in the development of landing gears for the TED-BF program. The Indian Navy is seriously considering using integrated electric propulsion for its second indigenous aircraft carrier, while it works on the formalities for obtaining approvals for the 45,000-ton aircraft carrier, which will be based on the baseline INS Vikrant. An integrated electric propulsion system is based on the complete integration of electrical power generated on board, including propulsive power, ship's services, and electrical weapon system power. Integrated electric propulsion has a higher power density, and is critical for introducing modern power-hungry weapon systems. After seeing the outstanding performance of five Tejas light combat aircraft at the recently held Desert Flag multilateral air exercise in United Arab Emirates, the Indian Air Force is planning more overseas outings for the Tejas fighter jet. The Tejas aircraft is also taking part in the ongoing COPE India exercise with F-15E and Su-30 aircraft, and the Tejas will be a regular feature at all planned air exercises in India and foreign countries. The work on the new advanced landing ground in eastern Ladakh will begin this month, giving strategic advantage to forces to operate fixed and rotary wings platforms hardly 30 kilometers from a line of actual control with China. Border Roads organization aims to complete the project within two working seasons, against five working seasons taken normally for a work of this magnitude even in planes.